and uh, Dr. Peter Kostner for having me to pay for this talk. It's been a great pleasure to be in this inauguration this morning. And uh, I'd like to uh, share my experience with you on the role of anti vegetables in various other disorders other than ARLD. I don't have a very large case series supporting the evidence, but some of the clinical uh, experiences that I have had are really very convincing. Uh, as we have uh, heard in the morning, uh, this was a patient with uh, a read lead after prolongated diabetic retinopathy, and uh, he presented with a sudden loss of vision and rubiosis. And prior to do a revision vitrectomy, he came to us and uh, we planned to do an elastin injection. And this is post elastin injection one week after, where the rubiosis has completely regressed. And this also helped us in uh, the rigid vitrectomy and uh, post vitrectomy. We had an excellent vision of point one when we had just black perception at the time of the presentation. This is going to be. Uh, four cases of uh, various types of uh, vein occlusions. This was a 58 year old vein with a labile hypertension and he presented with uh, metamorphopsia and uh, visual disturbance in his right eye of one month duration. And when we examined him, he had a classical end vein occlusion involving the lower half of the retina and the macula. This is the closer antigraphy confirming the the vital changes in the leaky liquid diet. Though the macula does not show because of blocked fluorescence, the OCT definitely confirms the presence of cystic changes in the macula. This was after two big intermittent injections and a quadratic laser to the lower, lower half of the retina. You could see a complete resolution of the cystoid changes and an improvement in the vision. He came back two weeks ago with recurrent blurred vision, and if you can look at it, you, he's got the weak hemorrhages in the entire macula and the macula area with recurrent cystoid. He's going to be followed up with uh, intellectual injections. This is a doctor by profession, a hypertensive again, and uh, has a history of hypercholesterolemia. On medical line of treatment, again, noticed difficulty in depth perception and uh, difficulty in reading of two weeks duration had a tributary vein occlusion with X-ray. And this is again after control of her blood pressure. She had a very good resolution. Here she did not require any further laser intervention. Though with two injections of uh, six weeks apart, she had a very good resolution of the clinical condition. Again, OCD after first injection, and this is the OCD after second injection. The substantial changes that I could definitely see was a change in thickness, but not in the function. This is a third patient, an engineer by profession, 58 year old male, again presented with uh, disturbance in vision of one month standing. Again, having a branch vein uh, occlusion involving the lower heart gate and the macula, corresponding FFA and OCT changes. He required four intravitreal injections to get this type of resolution on the OCD. And clinically, you could see the scarring of the macula that we just heard in the morning. And there is not much of a substantial visual change when compared to the previous two patients. Now, this is a very interesting case. He presented with uh, amylosis fuel gaps of two months duration, a 46 year old male, and uh, not a hypersensitive, not a diabetic. He was diagnosed as having a non ischemic central vector vein occlusion with cystoid edema. The fluorescent antibiotics showing the extensive vital changes in the veins and also the OCD confirming the cystoid changes. Now he has had seven injections of intravitreal elastin. With the third injection, he had a complete resolution of his macular edema. But once the effect of the drug wears away, we can literally time the recurrence, and this is one of the recurrence episodes that he has had. Following this, we have given him about four more injections of transdermal acetone, and with that, his vision has been stable, but his recurrent edema continues to nightmare us. So I want to put this question in front of the floor, how long can we go on? And 
how much can we go? This is a post case of diabetic uh, who came with uh, difficulty in uh, near vision and uh, after an OCT and re-examination, he had cystic changes in the macula. This is the other guy. And again, this was after two intellectual, I mean after three intellectual injections of one month apart. You could see the clinical resolution and focal treatment in the certain areas for the sesame changes. You could see a resolution of the cystoid edema that one or two cysts still persist. And he still um, follow up with those people that get uh, the retreatments as a went There's a patient with proliferative diabetic retinopathy, type 2 diabetes. You can see the new vessel cells fell here, and the other eye with attraction working changes. This was after four sessions of PRP with uh, two injections of Avastin, showing no further progress with the disease, but you can still see some vascular changes persisting. This is a second patient uh, who came to me after two months after the stroke, a type 2 diabetic with hypertension. You could see the fibrovascular proliferation and the optic disc. And this was after two intervention injections and six sessions of laser, we could achieve this uh, result. And this is the other eye of the same patient who had uh, fibrovascular proliferation. One of the two weeks prior, we had an intellectual devastin and uh, did the membrane to me and uh, this was the post uh, two results. Again, a month ago, she came back with a recurrent uh, episode of uh, venous stasis in that eye and she's still on follow-up with uh, repeat injections. This is a myope, 28-year-old, who lost his right eye for a great vertical detachment 10 years ago, presented with metamorphopsia and sudden drop of vision. And you could see a paraphobial hemorrhage with the uh, tissue in the heart of the field, the choroid with the choroid vessels. Again, this is after five injections of intellectual elastic. You could see a regression of the lesion but corresponding increase in the scar tissue was seen, though there was a partial uh, benefit of uh, vision improvement. This is a second case with a 36-year-old male who also presented with metamorphopsia and uh, changes in the paramacular area, effectively confirming the presence of the CMV and <coughs> two injections. The vision has improved with the stabilization of the condition. This is a young 46-year-old male who came with uh, a diagnosis of android streak, presented with a macular hemorrhage in his right eye. This was in December 2006, and uh, he was injected with intramural investment, and this was one of his follow-up visits that he had come. And this first injection was done in Germany. And as a post, uh, this was in 2007, we saw him. And uh, he had an asymptomatic left eye, but on closing angiography, he had an active CMV there along the And uh, the right eye, in spite of intravitreal evastin, we could not stop the further progression of the disease. He had repeat hemorrhages and repeat scarring in the macula area, and the vision dropped to point five. The left eye, we were able to salvage that with five injections, and he continues to be on follow-up and will be guided with the injections. This was a patient who was diagnosed as having a coronary angioma in his left eye. This was in 2004. He received three sessions of uh, PDT with vitropofilin as well as vitropofilin. And this was, we saw him in 2007 where he had still a persisting active choroid vessels and serious retinal edema. Again, after seven injections, though the choroid leakage has subsided, the overall visual prognosis has been very poor. This is a patient with uh, telangiectatic changes in the paramacular paraphobial area in the right eye and an extensive change in the left eye with cystoid edema. Peripheral retina had already shown 
include quadrants. The fluorescent antibiotics are confirming the pedantic tactic changes and the leakage and system changes. With anhydrous photocoagulation and focal treatment to the macular area, we could redress quite extensively the exudates and the visual improvement was seen and he's again continues to be a follower. We had two children with RRP, whom we had treated with uh, a com combination therapy. This was a 28-week uh, immature child with a birth weight of 1.19 kilos. At, uh, at 34 weeks, we could notice uh, new muscle proliferation and underwent the conventional thirteen laser for both eyes. And four weeks after the laser injection, we found the proliferation, I mean, persisting proliferation, and we injected 0 0.03 ml of Avastin. This was a second child, very similar, 27 weeks with 1.01 kilos. At 33 weeks, we could see the progression of the disease and laser. And when we, this was the second child we treated. So having learned from the previous one, we simultaneously injected Avastin in, in this child. Both have shown excellent regression and no further progress of the disease and no need for further laser intervention. Thus, in conclusion, I would like to say that the spectrum of indication for anti ventures are increasing every day. The action is of a short duration, so repeat injections are needed. It's an excellent adjuvant for, along with laser PRP, for decreasing retinal ischemia. It's also excellent in its role for addressing colloidal and retinal vascular proliferation, vasculitis, vascular leakage, and cystoidema. Need for long acting drugs are important to reduce the injection related complications. And as we just heard this morning, that we need something to redress the scar tissue that normally occurs at these conditions. Thank you for your attention.